but let's start with Drake. Uh, Drake didn't Drake Drake didn't have time to respond for real, but he decided to say some things. Mm-hmm. First, at a concert, he said, "You know, there's no rapper in this whole world that could ever in their life fuck with me." That's not true. And then, hey, listen, I just said that's what he said. I'm just reporting at the moment. I have yet to give an opinion. And I'm just responding to what you said. That's not true. But then, oh man, I thought we had it saved. Then Drake went to Instagram. We did. Did we? Don't look like it. But that's okay. Listen, it's easy to find. No worries. If it's not in the tops, then it's in the messages. No, it's not in either one. And this is too much to edit. So, okay. listen. Drake, Drake responded on Instagram like nobody asked him to. <laughs> well, we didn't ask him to respond, just not in that way. Right. And that's the problem. Well, Drake, Drake responded have- with words sorry. with words on the screen. I'm sorry? I was going to say, Drake doesn't have time. I think you were alluding to that. Drake doesn't have time to... Well, I think when they're ready to do what they want to do, they do it. Drake was Drake was recording rhymes on his on his BlackBerry in his early days. Drake could, Drake could find a way to put it in his iPhone notes if he really wanted to write a verse. But Yeah, I found what he said. Oh, okay. He wrote on Instagram, they rather go to war with me. <laughs> So dramatic. Then admit they are their own worst enemy. Crying laughing emojis. That's the post. I don't know what that means. No one knows what it means, but it's provocative. It gets gets the people people going. going. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. No, I thought that to myself. I, I thought to myself, okay, this is, I don't know what this means. And maybe this does mean something. It could mean absolutely nothing. But maybe it does mean something to them. I think Drake is full of shit. But it meant nothing to me. I was just like. I think, I think Drake is completely full of shit. Write a song, my nigga. Well, you know what it is, right? He can't, he can't like, he can't ignore it. He has a the impulse when people talk about him. He's one of those people who has an impulse to react to that or to respond. He respond with a song. He doesn't know how not to. Well, we just established that, you know, he big time now. He probably don't want to just, you know, get on his phone and he'll, he'll want to make a song that bad. But we already in know the, he want to make a song that bad. In the words of Drake. I waited four days, nigga. Where y'all at? Wow. It's been a week. Yep. It's been seven whole days. And all seven we got... whole days. And not a word from you. Exactly. <laughs> now. Uh-huh. Let's go to... Someone who used to be a friend of Drake and the internet is saying is not a friend of Drake anymore. Uh, you know, usually we don't come up here and do this, but it seems relevant this time around. Oh, no, and I'm so, here for, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm here for the rappers beefing, the men specifically. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> Tell us the tea. <laughs> Give us the tea. What a few days ago. Me? See what you did there. Uh, a few days ago, the internet was a buzzing mm-hmm. because Rick Ross unfollowed Drake. And, you know, whatever. But then a video surfaced of Rick Ross in his car. Jamming. Rocking out. Bopping hard. Having a good little time. Having a good old time. To the Kendrick verse that this is Drake. Uh, it, seems, it seems there are things happening. Yeah. You could say that. That's that's one way of saying. <laughs> it it seems like Ross is 
distancing himself from Drake, to say the least. Yeah, it seems that way. I'm just glad that we got some really, really good music before they distance themselves. Yeah. Because I know that people are concerned that they may not make music together anymore, but there is so much Drake and Rick Ross music that I'm okay with them never making another song together again. Me too. But I'm a hater. <laughs> okay. So. All right. That's fair. I'm cool with it, but I know people are hurt about it. People are upset about it. And uh, I understand why. Get I don't really I don't really care and that leads me to the next and final piece of this topic I don't really care about what Jermaine Dupree said either but he, but he said something he said that really everyone's got it wrong he said quote 20 years later, the real big three celebrating confessions. All right. All right, JD. Fun fact, the iPhone didn't even exist when we made this album. And so he is saying that the real big three is Usher, Jermaine Dupree, and Brian Michael Cox, the creators of Confessions. I don't know why that fact was fun. I just feel like he made him sound old. But it's okay. <laughs> um, thank you for that, Jermaine Dupree. Uh, we appreciate you, Brian Michael Cox, and Usher for what you did with that album. Everyone loves it. Some people love it more than I do, but everyone loves it. And <laughs> thank you for that. Um. I don't know how you got here. I don't know who set for you. I don't know where you came from. But thank you for that. And and congratulations on the anniversary of such a uh, pivotal project in Black music, R&B music, hip hop adjacent, you know, all of that, right? It's just wonderful. We love confessions. We don't have any beef with that, but Jermaine Dupree, who 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 asked for who asked for you? You ever I, mean, I, I had a grandmother who my great grandmother who when I would be there as a kid, she would um she would call one person. She would be sitting by the window, looking out the window, and she would call one person and then let's say I would be the one to, to show up, but I'm not the one she called. Who asked for you? Is what she would say. And that's how I feel right now while I sit by the window. Um, who asked for J- who asked for Jermaine Dupree? I don't know, but I also don't know <laughs> who called for Kanye. Okay. Because <laughs> hold on, hold on, wait. What's really confusing to me before we get to Kanye is Jermaine Dupree don't even do rap music right now. Let's talk about what he's talking about, the big three. Is not about rap. And the big three thing is about rap. It's about lyricists. No, but at the core of all of this, this is about FOMO. And all these niggas have FOMO. It's so weird. It's so weird. Biggest Kanye. names in music. Biggest names in music. And they got FOMO. They, 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 because even with the Rick Ross thing, okay, fine. Y'all saying that they're feuding. They haven't made it clear to us that they're feuding other than this. But like, I, mean, I think I think that's Ross telling us. Sure, but then you get in the booth too, Ross. And I know that's not really what he does. And right now, fine. he's busy facing cows and girlfriends. But that's what I'm talking about. Like, everybody got FOMO. Everybody want to be involved, especially right. because it is the big three. Everybody right. want to be a part of this. Well, speaking of everyone. Kanye said. Oh, please, Kanye. Oh, excuse Kanye me. Said, excuse me. Yay. His legal team recently put out a statement saying that he would like for all of us to call him Yay. We need to stop calling him Kanye. Kanye said, everyone knows I washed Kendrick on No More Parties in LA. Everyone knows I washed Drake 
at the Free Hoover concert. Everyone knows I brought Adidas into this culture and I took them out. Everyone knows. Huh? That Adidas thing is false, by the way. False. Everyone knows. A lot of them, the Virgil, Jerry Kim, all work for me. I made Jesus, Dark Fantasy, Pablo, Graduation, Throne, 808s. I made Runaway Devil. Oh, I made, there's no commas here, so excuse me if this sounds weird. There were certain albums that he named that I said, is that one album or two? That must have been the later albums. (laughs) Jesus is one. Dark Fantasy is one. Pablo is one. Graduation is is one. Uh-huh. Throne is one. 808 is run is one. Right. Then he's saying songs. I made oh, Runaway. It was songs then. Yeah. Yeah, he's saying I made Runaway. I made Devil in a New Dress. I know that. I made Father Stretch. I am the only person to come back to number one after cancellation. There is only one goat. I stand by me. My friends call me Yay. And then he put a super old school smiley face with like a semicolon and a parenthesis. No, Kanye, please. Nope. Nobody asked about you. And that's fine. Like, Kanye is so talented. And Kanye has made some amazing music. I just, I'll say that. But, sir, this is not about you. This this ain't ain't have nothing to do with you. Yo, you know, we talk a lot about about women and how women be, you know, buzz, buzz, buzzing and, you know, but the men be getting into it too. Just, I just don't know. I just don't know why. Why everyone wants to chime in when this has nothing to do with them. And Drake, who it does have something to do with, he won't, he just won't get in the booth. Oh. I mean, Drake has a Drake has a, a a lot to hide behind right now. I'm not saying he's hiding. I'm just saying it's a perfect time for him to be like, I'm not doing that yet because he has other things going on, and we sure. know that. So right. he could very easily be like, I have time for that shit. Also, you know, he could be thinking because this would cross my mind. I'm stopping what I'm doing. I'm I have a full tour that I am on right now. It was a half tour and then it became a full tour. I have all these things going on. I'm not stopping what I'm doing right now to talk to y'all. I'll talk to y'all when I'm ready. And if you believe that you are number one, that's that's not the wrong stance to take. That's not, I should say, that's not a wrong stance to take. Oh, y'all gotta wait till I'm done doing what I have to do. And then I'll get to y'all. But he should have said it. I would have preferred if he said that. He should have came out. He should have said what he said. He should have been like, I got a lot to do, but I'm going to get to this. That's it. It's on the bottom of my to-do list. When I get to it, I, I, I'll, I'll let y'all know. Right. Or do like J. Cole. We ain't heard J. Cole say a word yet. Not a tweet. Not a concert appearance. Just He's working on the vlog. <laughs> and the response. Oh yeah, no, definitely. But he working on the vlog. He's like, wait, I had a, I had, I had a calendar set up. <laughs> like I had a schedule. <laughs> right. Y'all, <laughs> y'all not gonna throw off the, y'all not gonna throw off the calendar. <laughs> okay. Now, what's the boards everybody does now? Oh, vision board. Vision board. Hey, he's like, it's like I, that wasn't that wasn't on my vision board, but I'm gonna get, right, I'm gonna get yeah. to it though. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna get to it, but right now I gotta. See this board back here? I got to finish what's on the board. He's like, the vlog is coming to life. People love the vlog. I got to make sure the vlog is okay. And I'm making this music and this album that I've arranged and rearranged and recorded more verses. And I need to get back to this. The right. tour is finished for me. Um, you know, let me get up. Work and Summer, like... Jermaine is a businessman, okay? And Jermaine has a lot of things happen in the summer. 
that, you know, he's probably in business meetings. He's probably doing all the things. Dreamville, Dreamville Fest is coming up soon. Absolutely. You know, listen, and I, and I appreciate, you know, uh, you know, a biz, a good businessman. So let your man go do what he got to do first. I, same thing for him. Go do what you got to do. Make sure Dreamville Fest is good. Make sure the people of North Carolina are prepared for what's about to happen. And then give us what we need, please. 